Hey, what's going on guys? Mark here. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Now, as you may well know, in custom car audio, we will oftentimes use expanded metal mesh. We will use this to protect amplifiers and subwoofers and speakers, but also to accent and highlight areas of a build. Now, when we use this, we don't want to just lay it in there and have it be flat. That would be way too plain. We actually want to add some shape to this, which will make it much more strong, and it will also give it a much more unique look. So what are the steps for doing that? And what is a common mistake that I see people making when it comes to what side of the mesh to face outwards? That's coming up my friends, let's get on into it. So to get started with making the metal mesh insert that's going to go inside of these pieces, I'm going to be using these pieces that I actually used as templates when I copied the shape over to those. These are going to be the male and female side of the mold. I've also got my raw metal mesh over here ready to go. When we go to mold this, we don't wanna have any sharp edges where it could potentially tear. So the first thing I wanna do here is I'm going to chamfer this inside piece. To do this, I'm loading up this 45 degree chamfer bit into my router table. Now, a lot of you guys are always asking about my router table setup. I'll put a link down in the video description for you. Let's get this fired up and make this cut. So there we go, that was easy enough. Got the 45 degree chamfer applied on the inside. Now I do wanna point out something important here. Since the material that we're using for our mold is half inch thick, that means we're actually gonna be drawing the metal about a half of an inch. So as a general guideline, a general rule of thumb, just doesn't always work out perfectly. You might have to play with it a little bit. But in general, if I use a half inch spacing, the spacing matches the thickness of the material that will give me a nice draw on the metal. If this was only a quarter inch gap, it might be too tight of a draw and not work out quite right. It might tear the metal, so that's just something to be aware of. The next thing I need to do here is I need to actually make this into a mold box. So I'm gonna cut two pieces of wood that are this same outside profile, this rectangle on this piece. What I've done here is I flush trim three different rectangular pieces together. So the top is a solid piece, that middle layer there, that's our actual shaped piece, and then the bottom is a solid piece as well. So they're all currently template tape stuck together still. And what I like to do is on the edge here, I like to make just a squiggle mark so I know which side lines up with which because now I'm going to separate this layer and this layer. Actually, real quick before we do that though, I'm going to grab, you guys are always wondering what I do with my extra material. I cut it into a bunch of strips like this, a little something like this. They're all two inches by 12 inches. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut these down and I'm actually going to attach them to the sides and these are just going to serve as a guide. Okay, so now I was able to separate the layers and now you can see what my mold box looks like so far. So I attached these skinny pieces from my scrap wood pile and you can see I added a little chamfer on the edge there. That's just to kind of guide the top into place. So the top is currently template tape stuck together. And just in case you guys are wondering and thinking, oh man, that's such a waste of wood just to make that box. I can use this for other projects in the future. I would just have to switch out this center piece. But anyway, there's my squiggle marks there. Here's my other squiggle marks. So I know that it lines up like this and goes into position. So now the deal is obviously we have the female side of the shape. How do we get the male side added in here? I start with taking the male side of the shape and applying only a couple of really small pieces of template tape. This allows me to carefully line it up and position it just so that it temporarily holds inside the female shape. Now on the bottom side of the male shape, I can add a bunch of template tape. That way it's really going to stick. I can then remove the backing paper and stick the assembly together. And since I had more template tape on the bottom of the male piece, once I separate everything, the bottom of the male piece is going to stick to the bottom of the mold. So we've got our mold box made. It's Hertz approved, right bud? That tail wag though. Now I need to cut down my metal mesh. Now the trick with metal mesh, if you run your hand on it carefully, there's going to be one side that's nice and smooth and then another side that it just feels a little bit more rough. That's just the way they manufacture this. You want the side that is smooth facing up. I've taken a couple different measurements and now I'm cutting this down to size to fit into my grill press. And I'm using this template tape in order to make sure that the piece doesn't shift on me before I press it. This is also a great way to line up the mesh to make sure that the 
ridge that I'm molding against is completely parallel with the lines in the mesh itself. So to mold the metal mesh, I'm gonna be using this guy right here. This is a 12 ton shot press. Now, if you don't have one of these, I've heard of people actually jacking up a tire of their vehicle and putting the press box underneath that and then carefully lowering the tire down on it and using the weight of the vehicle in order to sandwich the press box, but a shop press is something that's common at a vehicle repair facility or in a machine shop. So maybe if you have some friends in those industries and ask around, maybe they can help you out. So now it's just a matter of using the shop press to compress my mold. And you can notice here that I do it in multiple different locations, kind of working my way from the middle to the outside, evenly pressing this mesh. Now in a second here, we're gonna see how the mesh turned out, but real quick, a thank you to our show sponsor, Audio Control. As you guys probably know, in this build, I'm using audio control amplifiers and a digital signal process and this build is more geared towards sound quality, but what about those of you that want SPL or tons of bass output? Well, Audio Control has released this guy right here, the new LC-1.1500. This amp definitely has some power coming in at 850 watts RMS at four ohms and 1500 watts RMS at two ohms. Now, of course, the amplifier has crossover controls, a gain control, polarity control, but what's really unique about Audio Control's amps is they have the built-in AccuBase technology. AccuBase makes this amplifier perfect for integrating with a factory sound system where the bass rolls off as you turn up the volume. It actually restores that bass so that you're not losing any output. Tons of other features on this thing, a full review coming soon, and a big thanks to Audio Control for making good sound great. So here is how our metal mesh turned out. Now you'll notice that my lines aren't super crisp and that's partially because this particular mesh has so much open area that it really doesn't seem to have as crisp of lines as it actually does. And the other thing that you could do is if you were looking for a little bit more crisp of a line, instead of having a half inch between the female and the male, you could try a quarter inch and experiment with that. But on this vehicle, most of the lines, especially on the interior, are more rounded over. So I really like this look. Let's see how this looks looks with the panel on top. Here we go, looking good. You know what, we gotta see this in the vehicle as well. I'm gonna put that over in the vehicle real quick. Got it in the vehicle here. I'm really happy with the way this looks. It looks really cool above the amps. And especially once we add that lit acrylic behind it, it's really gonna accent and look nice. Now I do need to make the other piece of metal mesh that's gonna sit above the subwoofers here. Let's do a little bit of editing magic because it's the same process. Wha-bam! So here is what that metal mesh looks like up above the subwoofers. And I know some of you guys are wondering, won't that rattle, won't that vibrate? Here's a little bit of a clip with the subs just going ham. And as you can see, I have a little slight bit of vibration in the middle of the mesh itself, but I don't think I'm gonna have any issues with noise. This is actually temporarily mounted right now. Let's see how I plan to mount this permanently in the future. Ignore this yellow tape for now, but ultimately to mount the mesh to my pieces, what I'll be doing is don't forget that I have this acrylic piece here. And I can carefully line it up and drill holes in the acrylic and then just have fasteners that come in from the backside and kind of sandwich the mesh in place. That way it holds the mesh and it holds the acrylic to my board from the backside. We are in the home stretch now. All I have left to do on this build is I need to add that LED accent lighting and mount those acrylic pieces. And I also need to do the upholstery to cover everything up. So if you guys are new to the channel here and want to make sure that you see the rest of this build log series or you want to catch some of my other videos, Videos, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Check out some of my other popular videos here on screen. A special thanks goes out to Audio Control and John, Brian, Ali, Steve, Emmanuel, and Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for helping with the making of these videos. As always, my friends, I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you for watching.